train that goes back and forth on an east-west section of a railroad track. Its velocity, measured in meters per minute, is given by a differential function where t is measured in minutes. Select values for the velocity are in the table. So find the average acceleration. Well, what's the relationship between acceleration and velocity? It's the derivative. Okay, so if we are finding the average acceleration, that's just going to be um, the change in the velocities over that amount of time. Okay, uh, divided by the amount of time. Okay, so it is going to be uh, negative 120 minus 100, change in the velocities over the change in time. Again, the way that I understand it, technically that's an acceptable answer, but that is negative 220 over 6, which both of those are divisible by 2. So it is negative 110 over 3. Um, it doesn't say include units, but it really can't hurt. Uh, so meters per what? And it's squared. Okay. Um, so again, it doesn't say include units, and on the rubric it only gives one point for the average acceleration, but sometimes, and yes, you have to have the negative. Okay. Yes, you have to have the negative. Okie dokie, so part B, do the data in the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is negative 100 per meters per minute at some time between 5 and 8? What do y'all think? You do, we're not getting married, what do you think? Okay, based on, what's your reason? IVT, okay, yes, okay. Um, since, and you need to say this, any time you use the intermediate value theorem, the IVT, you have to either know that it's continuous, be told that it's continuous, or you have to establish that it's continuous. Did they tell us that it's continuous? Okay, they did not directly tell us that it's continuous. They told us that it's differentiable, which differentiability implies continuity, but you need to mention that somewhere, okay? You need to say, since uh, V sub A of T is differentiable, it is also continuous. is also continuous, therefore, by, uh, now they didn't use the abbreviation, I think it's pretty, it's a pretty uh, well-known and accepted abbreviation, but it really can't hurt, hurt to write the intermediate value here. There is a time to between t equals 5 and t equals 8, for which I was actually doing really good at yeah. The velocity is negative 100 meters per minute because 40 is less than negative 100, oh, no, greater than, my bad, or greater than, which is greater than negative 120. Okay, so they give you one point for that inequality there. You do have, you can't just say by the intermediate value theorem. You have to show or establish that the value in question falls within two um, relevant values, in this case the 40 and the negative 120. Uh, and then you get one point conclusion using IVT. So you have to have that language in there somewhere. 
Okay, how did I, good question. Okay, I knew to use IBT because they asked me about velocity and my data is velocity. Okay, so if they're asking you about a value that you know the uh, data for or something like that, if they're asking you for a value and that's the function that they're giving you, or in this case the table that they're giving you, if they're asking you about a value within that table, that's going to be intermediate value there. If they're asking you, if they ask us something about the acceleration, that would be mean value theorem uh, because that would be the derivative. Mean value theorem relates the derivative to uh, the slope of the secant line. Okay, but because they were asking me about the function that was given, that's intermediate value theorem. Okay, at time two, train A's position is 300 meters east of the origin station and the train is moving to the east. Write an expression involving an integral that gives the position of train A in meters from the origin station at time 12. Use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals indicated by the table to approximate the position. Okay, so let's just start with the integral. So the position at time 12 S of 12 is equal to the initial position at time 2, they said it was 300 meters east. So 300 plus the integral, this doesn't start at 0 because the initial position they gave us was at time 2. So it starts at 2 to 12 of the velocity function. Why not zero? Because the condition they gave us was at time two. It wasn't, and it wasn't a true initial position. It wasn't its position at time zero. It said at time two, it was 300 meters east. Huh? Yeah. Even though the even though the table there starts at zero, they give us the value starting at two. So we're not going to include zero zero in our trapezoidal sum. Okay, so you get one point for your position expression there, and then you get one point for the trapezoid sum. So let's do that from 2 to 12. We've got uh, one half. Let's see how do I want to set this up. I'm going to say the integral from 2 to 12 of the A of T dt. It. Okay, all of these are going to have the one half, so that goes in front. Okay, uh, for the first one there, let's see here. We've got, uh, what is it? Base one plus base two times the height. So, uh, base one is the, I think about it for a second. Base one is the 100, plus base two is the 40. The height is the width of the interval, so times 3. Plus our second trapezoid is 40 plus negative 120 times the height of that one. The width of the interval is 3. Plus negative 120 plus negative 150. The width of that interval is 4. Okay, it looks like it's going to be nasty, but these numbers really aren't that bad. Uh, 140 times 3 plus negative 80 times 3 plus negative 270 times 4. One forty times three would be four twenty. 80 times 3 is 240, but we're subtracting it. 270 times 4 is 4 times 7 is 8 to 1080. 
And when we add all those together and divide by 2, we get negative 450. So that's the trapezoidal sum. You get one point for that part. And so its position, the train's position at time 12 is 300 plus negative 450. So it is negative 150. Um, that's in meters. Since it's negative, that means it's to the west. Now, they wrote it in words at the end. They said the position of train A at time 12 is approximately 150 meters west of origin station. I don't think you necessarily have to put it in words. It just says one point for position at time 12. So I really don't think that you necessarily have to put it in words. It never hurts, um, but recognizing that negative means it's in the opposite direction, positive is east, negative is west. It's a good thing to remember. Okay. Uh, last part, it says a second train travels north from the origin station. At time t, the velocity of train b is given by that function, and at time 2, the train is 400 meters north of the station. Find the rate in meters per minute at which the distance between train a and train b is changing at time 2. So let's draw a picture. Okay. Now, Honestly, this is one of the questions when I get to this part, I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to go look at problem number two, and I'm going to come back to this part if I have time, okay, um, on the actual AP exam. I'm going to wait because I know this is going to take me a little time to figure out. I could get more points on the other question, okay? But let's think about it. We're starting, okay, this is origin station. This is train B. Train B is going north. Train A is going east. Hello. Put it back I sensed you like right before you got me. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Where are we at? Um, we are trying to find the rate at which the distance is changing. So what kind of problem is this? A related rate, which is not an interval. It's derivative. Right, we're trying to find D, D or Z, whatever you want to use. Let's use Z. D, D just looks weird. Yeah, let's use D, Z. Okay, so let's, let's put what we know about this scenario. We're talking about the distance changing at time 2. So we know where they're at at time 2. Where's train A? 300 meters. Where's train B? 400 meters. They just told that uh, told us that in the problem. Now, if you did not know this, how, how the heck are you supposed to find the distance between them without a calculator for that hypotenuse? The Pythagorean theorem, but I know the figure. I'm not squaring 300, squaring 400, and finding the square root. It's a three, four, five triangle. Right triangles, special triangles, way back when, three, four, five, so they're multiples, so that's 500. Yes, they are expected. If you haven't figured it out by now, they are expecting you to remember everything you have ever learned in math, okay? Just so you know. Um, okay, so rates at time two. What is the rate? For A, what is the rate for train A at time 2? It's in the table. 100. Its velocity is its rate. Okay. What would be the rate for train B? Well, we got to plug it in, right? Negative 5 times 4 plus 60 times 2 plus 25. So negative 20 plus 120 plus 25. So 125 is the rate for train B. All right, so let's set up our related rates. A squared plus B squared equals Z squared. So 2A 